All right, let's turn to our panel. The beginning of legal cannabis sales in Ohio and the big shakeup in the race for the White House have brought the cannabis industry back into the spotlight. Let's talk about it and the outlook from here with Morgan Paxia, co-founder and managing director of Poseidon Investment Management and Pablo Zuniak, or Zu, Zuniak, senior equity analyst and managing partner of Zunik and Associates. I hope I got both of your names right. Please feel free to correct me if not. Morgan, uh, let's start with you. Uh, just in terms of bringing us up to speed, because I'll admit I haven't covered the cannabis space in quite some time. It was so popular for a while. Uh, it hasn't necessarily been on my radar with the uh, AI so prevalent and such, but uh, just bring us up to speed about what's going on in the space. Yeah, well, we're, we're still here 10 years later uh, and still getting the work done. Uh, this year has been, you know, it's obviously an election year. And so we're seeing more chatter coming out of uh, former President Trump uh, actually revising his position on, on legal cannabis, which was a very welcome change, hoping to bring more Republicans uh, around to the issue. Uh, but in the meantime, it's it still is a state by state kind of growth story. As you mentioned, Ohio just opened for legal sales this weekend. Um, and as we've seen many times with new states opening, uh, long lines out the door, stock outs. Um, but the state is moving in a great direction. They, they got it open in a very efficient way uh, instead of taking a long delay, which we have seen in other states. And as a result, their, their market is moving. Uh, it's going to be quickly going to a billion dollars in legal sales on an annual basis in the state of Ohio and, and ultimately reaching a, a three billion run rate when it gets to a more mature run rate. And that's very helpful for these public companies uh, because they do have uh, good exposure in that state. So we're, we're happy to see that from Ohio because that also does help put pressure on states like uh, Pennsylvania as a border state that's been slow with its medical market to move to adult use. And we're also hearing talk about Indiana potentially moving to creating an adult use legal market. So state by state, we're, we're getting there. It's over a $30 billion a year industry now in the, in the United States. And um, we're just really needing to see some federal reform uh, via this rescheduling process to really help these companies from a cash flow perspective. So we're pending on this rescheduling news out of the, out of the DEA that's gone through and had overwhelming support. Uh, uh, something like almost 43,000 comments were submitted uh, in, and it was like a 92 percent uh, uh, interest in, in seeing this not only be rescheduled, but an overwhelming majority wanted actually descheduled. Um, so the American people are very clear about their position on cannabis, and, and now we just need the federal government to uh, to follow suit. So Pablo, I want you to weigh in. It, it, how do you see the election impacting this space? Yeah, I mean, I would love if you can put up a chart of the MSOS ETF, right, just to put things in context. You know, in the prior to, in October 2020, right, prior to the presidential election, the MSOS ETF was about 20, and it climbed all the way to 55 after the Georgia runoffs, uh, February 2021. So ahead of the election, back then, there was a lot of excitement, and then that was fuel even more when the Democrats took control of both chambers, as we expected that cannabis would be legalized in the US, right? Unfortunately, since then, the MSOA CTF has gone from 55 to seven, right? right? And you could make the argument that in the current context, we have a lot more positive catalysts going on. The President Biden began a scheduling review in October 2022. That's going through a process now. We have to wait for the DEA to decide if they want to reply um, to uh, how they respond to the public comments that were made, whether there are hearings, and when they decide to file uh, the final rulemaking in the Federal Register. So there's a process going on. We have President Harris, right, supposedly leading, the, I mean, Vice President Harris, supposedly leading in the polls, uh, potentially winning the, the White House, and, and uh, Democrats controlling both chambers. If we have that, that will be positive for cannabis, because we, we assume that she will raise the ante, right? They will not only reschedule, but potentially deschedule or federal legalized cannabis. So it's all gradual, it's all step by step. And then you look at uh, former President Trump, right? He's uh, made uh, what I would call cryptic comments uh, in the last few days about cannabis, but at least he's commented on it, right? Before he hadn't commented about it much. And now we have to wait what comes out tonight with Musk in, the, in Twitter or what comes out over the next few weeks in terms of his position on the Florida ballot. Or, or whether he raises the ante and comes out and makes uh, bigger pronouncements in terms of how he's thinking about cannabis. But we made the argument that for sure, you have a number of positive catalysts right now 
from Republicans, from Democrats, from the White House in terms of its scheduling that made the sector very attractive. Uh, it's a sector that I always say, if you want to invest in cannabis, there are some great stories. You could be looking at 20, 30 buyers by 2030, in my opinion. If you want to trade day to day, well, you know, make sure that, it's, uh, that you remember it's going to be a very volatile sector. But at the moment, again, I repeat, I think a great catalyst, the sector is lining up, lining up well, and uh, most scenarios will be favorable for the, for the sector. So, Morgan, we have less than a minute left, but I do want to build upon the, just the investment lens of this. What's going to separate the winners from the losers? Who stands to benefit most? Uh, well, we're certainly seeing now that Q2 is, is wrapped up for the most part for the largest companies. Uh, scale is really making a big difference. The largest operators are that with good vertical, meaning they have uh, good retail up to all the way up to their grow, um, are showing the strongest margin profile. Um, but it still comes down to execution. You have to be good at capital allocation, uh, not getting over your skis, over building and markets and anticipation. Um, so certainly watching how Florida progresses towards its uh, ballot initiative in November. Um, the industry is very focused on seeing that pass because that will unlock a lot of additional uh, legal sales growth. Um, but, you know, this it still is an execution story. It's an emerging market. Um, and so those that are not uh, executing as well. The numbers are showing. And, and so we're just seeing that um, the differentiation becoming clearer and clearer from, from those that are doing a good job. All right, Morgan, Pablo, really appreciate your insights. Thanks so much.